Thursday, seven games. We've got to stream in for fantasy basketball playoffs. Let's win it, Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and what's that? Can you name a country in South America? Um, uh, America? I'm also the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball, on TikTok at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Thank you also for making Locked On Fantasy Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and we are available on all platforms. Come ahead and come ahead. No, go ahead and give the old thumbs up, ring the bell, subscribe, Operation 75K. Let's hit it. And leave some comments down below as we look ahead to the action on Thursday, seven games on. We know that streaming is important. It might be your playoffs. You might have lost your third round pick, your fourth round pick, your fifth round pick, whatever. But you know what? You don't give up. You can still do things. You can still get guys in because you know what might happen to your opponent? Well, he might lose three players today as well. And then you're back in it. So don't give up. Keep streaming in. Get guys going. And if you're sitting on top, let's just keep putting the foot down, yeah? Let's smash them. What are we going to look at? To start things off, well, it would be a good idea if we started off with the first game of the day. It is the Minnesota Timberwolves taking on the Indiana Pacers. The Wolves go Thursday, Friday, Sunday this week. So three games in the final four nights of this week. Uh, Unfortunately, they only have two games next week, Thursday and Saturday. I talked about potentially dropping Mike Conley for a points league because you you might be able to do better. Through next week, obviously the schedule for the end of this week is solid, but does he play all three? I don't know. For the Pacers, they've only got two more this week, Thursday and Sunday, and then they play three next week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Saturday. In terms of um, injuries, at the moment, Josh Minot is questionable with an illness. I I really like Minot dynasty-wise. It might not pay off, but think of it like a Peyton Watson type investment. And then Jordan McLaughlin's also questionable. Doug McDirt I had as doubtful, but he is officially out now, and so is Benedict Matherin. On the Wolves, Carl Anthony Towns has been playing pretty poorly over the last few games at least, so I'd like to see him get back on track. We need to watch that and see where the minutes go because they were really down last game. While for the Pacers, Aaron Neesmith has not impressed at all recently. He's been really bad, actually. We'll see what happens. If he can't get 30 minutes in this game with um, McDermott and Math run out, then it's a, I think it's a very clear jack. In fact, I think he's probably a drop anyway. You might want to hold because they play Thursday, but then two days with no games, the subpar production from Neesmith is not that interesting. Guys that are boosted at the moment, they do seem to be using a little bit more of Kyle Anderson in preference at times to McDaniels and at times to Reed. That's only a stream guy, but three games in four nights, Kyle Anderson, a little bit interesting. While for the uh, Pacers, they keep starting Andrew Nempard. He's not very good at that job, but they are starting him and Matherin is out. So that should give Nempard a, a little bit of extra playing time, I think. I hope anyway. I would hope, anyway. The next game, we're looking at the Brooklyn Nets. They're going to take on the Detroit Pistons. The Nets still have three more games this week, so three games in four nights. Like the Wolves, they go Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. Next week, they only play three, and it's a bad schedule. Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday. So they don't play Monday or Tuesday. And they have, um, in the first five days of next week, one game on Wednesday. So we love the stream of adding, hey, let's try and make sure we've got Cam Thomas, Al, Ben Simmons, Al, Cam Johnson, Al, Daron Sharp, Al, at least Finney Smith and Schroeder have paid off. But then for the start of next week, very clear drops after Sunday. One game in five nights is not going to cut it. The Pistons play Thursday, Saturday this week, and then they go Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday after that. Um, in terms of injuries, Ben jo- ben, jo- ben Johnson. Uh, ben Simmons is out. Cam Johnson is out. Cam Thomas is out. Daron Sharp is questionable. While for the Pistons, um, Quentin Grimes, at this point, I'm listing him questionable. So what are we watching? On the Nets, Mikhail Bridges continues to stink. He has significant efficiency problems. The usage has been a little bit better with Cam Thomas not there, but I suppose these last like 20 games of the season, we need to assess what the Nets think of him, how he plays, and then how we value him moving forward. For the Pistons, Simone Fontecchio, 
he's basically getting starters minutes. Really, they're playing like six starters. Stewart gets the 30, Fotechia gets the 30. And that makes him at least a points and threes streaming guy. I'm not super interested in it, but it does give him value. In terms of guys getting boosted, well, with Simmons out, with Johnson out, with Thomas out, we already know that Dennis Schroeder's getting the boost. Dennis Smith gets a boost, but Lonnie Walker is somewhat interesting. Now, Lonnie Walker has teased us so many times. He's a guy, much like Fontecchio, points and threes. And if he shoots poorly, he gives you nothing. If he shoots well, he gives you something. He's very inconsistent, but there is an opportunity here for him. They're also boosting Isaiah Stewart because they're idiots. They also shout out to the Pistons signing Taj Gibson today on a 10-day, just the sort of guy to come in and really get some uh, developmental time out of. Stewart is getting boosted. He's getting a lot of minutes. He's still only a fringe guy to me, but with the minutes they're giving him, there's some interest there, I guess. The Miami Heat and the Dallas Mavericks. The old 2011 finals rematch. The Heat have three more games this week as well, Thursday, Friday, Sunday. They only play three next week, so a bit of a rough schedule with no game Monday, Tuesday. They play Friday, uh, so Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. The Mavericks, two more games this week, Thursday, Saturday, and then a big four-gamer next week, Monday, a midweek back-to-back Wednesday, Thursday, and then Sunday. Hero is out for at least two more games, so he's not coming back until the earliest Sunday. Same with Kevin Love. And Joshie Richardson is out for the season. We don't have a Mavericks injury report. I'd expect that we might see Lively or Kleber or Doncic. They always tend to chuck those guys on there. What's on my radar for the Heat? Caleb Martin's playing better. We talked about it on the Waiver Wire show earlier today, how he was top 100 over the last week. I'm not massively excited. Three games in four nights does get me somewhat interested in what he can do. Well, for the Mavs, last time out, Daniel Gafford. Big double-double, 21 minutes. Is that real? Does he play more minutes than Kleber and Lively? I would suggest not. But if he gets 23 minutes, then we are back to being interested. Again, my skepticism lies from the fact that Lively and Kleber sucked. Lively got into foul trouble. They combined for zero points, and we still only got 21 minutes from Daniel Gafford. So I'm not super excited, but they're terrible at the moment, the Mavericks. The defense is dreadful, so maybe they think Gafford provides more. I'm not sure he does, but maybe they think that. In terms of guys getting boosted, well, Duncan Robinson is the guy that we really need to look at there in Miami. And PJ Washington is getting a lot of minutes. Now, 31 minutes of PJ Washington makes him very much a Gattuso. He's very much on the fringes, but he's getting 35 or 36. So if they're pumping 35 or 36 into PJ Washington, then you've got to be interested in using that because you know that's a lot of minutes. And at the moment, it is actually a lot of production from Peach. Today's episode is brought to you by the Nissan what is it? Nissan Rogue. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Do you ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. The 2024 Nissan Rogue is perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class exclusive exclusive Google built-in is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. Google Assistant, Google Maps, and Google Play Store are built right into the 12.3-inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid-size crossover for your next adventure. The 2024 Nissan Armada will change what you expect as well. That's another car. That's that's the Rogue. We've also got the uh, lineup including the Nissan Armada. It changes what you expect from a full-size SUV. So picture a rugged 4x4 that can seat up to 8 in first-class luxury and style. Tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, and Nissan Armada and go and find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. All right, let's, um, let's go to the next game. It is the Toronto Raptors and the Phoenix Suns. In terms of the Raptors' schedule, Thursday, Saturday this week, and they play four next week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. The Suns have almost the same. They have two more games this week, Thursday, Saturday, and then they go Monday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday. So they've got two games off at the beginning of next week, the Tuesday and Wednesday. Jakob Pertl had surgery on his finger. I'm going to guess he's out for the season. Scott Barnes had surgery on his hand. I'm going to guess that he's out for the season as well. I don't expect that Bruce Brown is going to be available to play, although that one has not been... Um, um, confirmed. So we'll find out about that. Hopefully we get some more information uh, on that one, but nothing cap- coming at this stage. Uh, Osho Baji left the last game with knee soreness. I'm going to put him questionable here. Devin Booker is currently out. There's some talk from Chris Haynes that if it was a playoff game, he would be um, available to um, available to play. Maybe he returns this weekend. I don't know. Whatever it is. It's not a long-term thing for Booker, but he's going to be out here. Akogi is will miss the last game. Um, I list him questionable, and Nasir Little is out for a few weeks. 
so we don't need to worry too much about him. In terms of what we need to watch for the Raptors, Gary Trent with Abaji in some doubt. Trent will get more opportunities. I want them to give it to somebody else, but they are giving it to Trent at the moment, so that's interesting. And then for the Suns, Royce O'Neal with Booker out. O'Neal starts. He's a little mid at the moment, but we know what he does. Some threes, some assists, some defensive stats. There's enough value in that. Guys getting boosted at the moment. Well, it's huge for Kali Olenek. Obviously, he's a must-roster player. With Jakob Pertl gone, he's going to start. I would imagine that Jonte Porter gets all the backup minutes there too. And then watch for guys like Mamadou Gay. And they are 100% completely out on Chris Boucher. For the Suns, Eric Gordon, much like Royce O'Neal, gets the boost with Devin Booker out. Gordon can be very inconsistent. He's like a points and threes, Leaky Beasley, Norman Powell, sort of a stream guy. Chicago and Golden State. Both of these teams play on Wednesday, so it's a back-to-back for both guys. The Bulls play Thursday, Saturday, as do the Warriors. So they've got three games in the next four nights as well, starting Wednesday. So Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, they play. The Bulls have four next week, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. The Warriors go Monday, Wednesday, Saturday. In terms of injuries at the moment, the Warriors are completely clean, and we really haven't seen that all season, or at least in this iteration of the Warriors. So we need to be paying attention both on Wednesday and Thursday to what happens with Kaminga, what happens with Pajemski, what happens with Wiggins, with Clay, with Paul. So many question marks. At the moment... Tory Craig is doubtful for the Bulls on Wednesday. So his return is coming. So maybe he plays on Thursday. And Dalen Terry is out on Wednesday. So I'll put him questionable. But he hasn't been in the rotation anyway. Who's getting boosted? It's obviously Ayo Desumu who's been getting boosted. But if Tory Craig does return, it'll be very interesting to see what that does to Desumu, if it does anything to Caruso, or if it does anything to Drummond. Does Craig returning stop any of the Vucevic and Drummond crossover minutes? Does... Craig start and Caruso or Desumu get benched. We need to watch that. Andrew Wiggins, I'll say that he's being boosted. He's not really, but he has been playing better of late and we need to see how they utilize this fully healthy team, which of course we just have not seen. The Denver Nuggets, they are hosting the Boston Celtics. The Nuggets got a pretty strong run of teams here. They have the Lakers, the Suns, and now not the Lakers are that good, but the, the Suns, the, uh, the Lakers, the Suns, and now the Celtics. Boston play Thursday, Saturday, and then they go four games next week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. The Nuggets go Thursday, Saturday, and then they play Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday. So four games next week for both of these teams. For the Celtics, Nemeas Cater is out, and Xavier Tillman missed the last game for personal reasons, so I'll put him as questionable, but he doesn't necessarily play every night anyway. Although he had got some minutes over Cornet two games ago, and then he was out. What is on my radar? It's about if I can be convinced that Al Horford is going to be worth holding, and he's not. Because again, they play Thursday, Saturday. We don't expect anyone to sit there necessarily. And he plays limited minutes. And then Monday, Tuesday next week, yes, Porzingis will sit one of those games. But so will Horford. So is it actually even worth having Al? Eh, Probably not. For the Nuggets, Contavious Caldwell-Pope has been pretty strong the last two to three games. We know that that's not his modus operandi. He's not that good every game. But while things are rolling at a pretty strong rate, we look at that as an interesting stream for defense and for threes. Guys getting boosted at the moment. Well, we saw last game, Jalen Brown. They left him all alone, the Warriors, and he went crazy in that one. Um, Sorry, that one wasn't. That was two games ago. So will they continue to get him more usage? But the Celtics are sort of just very, very much the same team all the time. And Michael Porter's been playing much better for the Nuggets as well, getting extra shot attempts, extra usage, and more importantly, extra minutes and rebounds, which are some of the hidden things, the rebounds especially, in his recent current uptick in production. The last game of the night is the San Antonio Spurs and the Sacramento Kings. The schedule, the Spurs go Thursday, Saturday, the Kings go Thursday, Sunday, but the Kings also play on Wednesday, so they're on a three-game in, four-night stretch. The Spurs play Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Sunday. The That's next week, and the Kings play Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday, so a bad schedule for the Kings. They've got three days off, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's terrible. This is a bad stretch for the Kings. So this is for 11 days, five games in 11 days. Pretty poor for Sacramento. Um... I'm going to list Victor Wembanyama as questionable. He's not, and I'm just going to go and double check this. He is not officially questionable at this point. He's not. But he had the shoulder issue entering last game. A few minutes before halftime, he went to the locker room early. And then towards the end, he seemed to be limping a little bit with his hip. So I just don't be shocked if Wembanyama appears on the injury report as questionable. Don't be shocked if Wembanyama misses one of the Monday, Tuesday games to start next week. Hope it's not hope I hope it's not right, but just I'm just feeling that a bit. For the Kings at the moment, it is just Sasha Vizenkov who is out. 
For the Spurs, really poor game last time out from Trey Jones. I am holding for now. But if they start to prioritize guys like Malachi Branham over him again, and he plays 21 minutes, I'd have no problem moving on from Trey Jones in, in points formats especially, but even in some category formats. Guys getting boosted at the moment. We are getting that Branham boost. He's had big scoring games, two in a row. He started over Bubble Champagne when he was out the game before. I don't really find a way to trust Branham consistently, but he's bringing a little bit more assist-wise. The scoring's been solid. We need to watch it. For the Kings, it's Malik Monk over Kevin Herter at this point. We know that Mike Brown can flip it at any point, but at the moment, it is Malik Monk who's getting that uh, prioritization, so just make sure that Monk has not been dropped anywhere in your league. Today's episode is brought to you by the Game Time app. Buying tickets to events, it's fun. Who li- I, we love going to events. I'm going to events. I'm going to a fashion show this weekend. I'm planning to go to baseball games and I'm heading over to the States, but I don't want it to be a tedious process. I don't want it to be laborious. I don't want it to be confusing. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets, last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, all in pricing. No confusion. They just tell you the price and you pay the price. What a novel concept that is, but you know, a lot of other places don't think that way. Not like Game Time, they've got everything absolutely sorted. And it's the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. You can see the view from your seat before you buy, so you know what to expect when you arrive. The all-in pricing shows your total upfront, so that you know that you're getting a great deal before you check out, and you can buy tickets in seconds with just two taps. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On. For $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code L-O-C-K-E-D-O-N for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets. Lowest price guaranteed. All right. So that's the seven games. Let's look at some little schedule things here. Thursday to Friday. There are two teams with the back-to-backs, Minnesota and Miami. Now, we already know that Miami's got no hero, no love. No Richardson. So, Caleb Martin, Duncan Robinson. Deeper leagues, you go to Jovic and Huckers. Bit of a boost happening. I don't think Paddy Mills is going to do anything, but whatever. Minnesota, Kyle Anderson. He played the back-to-back last time. Jaden McDaniels is bad for fantasy, but two games, there's a little bit of something worth it there. Let's look at the next four nights. That's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. There are three teams that play three games in four nights to end the week. Brooklyn, Miami, and Minnesota play those three games in four nights. So when you're looking at players to go and add, that's where we're looking. There's one team, the Utah Jazz, who has one game in the next four nights. So with Keontae George out sick again, with Taylor Hendricks out, you can consider, if if you wanted to, after Wednesday, like George, I think is probably good enough to hold, but the fact that you might get at max one game from him this week. And if you just desperately need games in, you've got to make that call. And that's a bad stretch of games. And it gets worse in terms of the Jazz's current stretch of games across the schedule. Over the next six nights, there are three teams that play four games in six nights. The Boston Celtics, the Minnesota Timberwolves, and the San Antonio Spurs. So you obviously know there's going to be an overload on Celtics, guys. So Porzingis will sit a game. Drew might sit one. Horford definitely will sit games. So that it opens up some stuff maybe for Pritchard, maybe for Tillman if he's available, or Cornette or Horford on some of those days. Minnesota should be all right in terms of guys sitting in or out, but watch for Conley. Uh, that means Alexander Walker steps up. And then the Spurs, I am a little concerned about where Wembenyama is sitting at the moment. Two games in six nights, there are five teams. Bad schedule. Atlanta, the Lakers, the Pelicans, the Magic, and the Jazz. We already talked about the Jazz. So fringe Hawks, guys. If you're stashing Kobe Bufkin, it's a bad time. Bruno Fernando, not going to be worth it. Sadiq Bay, DeAndre Hunter, they're probably not worth holding for two games in six nights. The Lakers, you're talking Rui Hachimura. The Pelicans, it might be Trey Murphy, even though he's gone crazy. Is two games in six nights of Trey, who relies upon elite volume and shooting to get there, is that worth it? It's debatable. And the Magic, that's Wendell Carter, who's now questionable. Gary Harris, Markel Fultz, maybe Jalen Suggs. I think I probably would hold him, but maybe he moves into that territory there as well. Next up, we go a little bit longer. You can get two extra games here. In fact, you can get three extra games in one of these scenarios. Again, that's really if you're really stretched for waiver moves, you want to look this far in advance. Usually, we'll look more short term. But if we look at the next eight nights, we have got Boston, Chicago, Dallas, and Portland playing five games in eight nights. So Chicago with the Desumu, Drummond, maybe Craig, uh, Portland with 
who knows what, but Jabari Walker, Dwap Reith, Chris Murray, maybe Delano Banton, the return of Tamani Kamara. It's really tough to rely upon those guys because Scoot could come back during that time as well. But they got five and eight. In terms of three and eight, well, the Jazz actually have two games in the next eight nights. That is a terrible schedule for the Jazz. So again, like they're just not going to play. This is after Wednesday, of course. And then Atlanta, the Lakers, the Pelicans, and the Magic have three games in the next eight nights. So dropping a Jazz guy who played two in eight for a Boston, Chicago, Dallas, Portland player, that's three extra games across eight nights. That is important. That volume really can't be ignored, I don't think. Let's look at the best points streamers for Thursday. We've got Alinek O'Neal. Again, we're trying to capture a range of roster percentages here for, sh- for shallow to moderate to deep. Kelly Alinek, Royce O'Neal, the Rabbit Hunter, Alex Caruso, Brandon Pajemski, Lonnie Walker, and Duncan Robinson. For ESPN points, pretty similar names. You've got Kelly Olenek up the top there, followed by Royce O'Neal, Alex Caruso, Duncan Robinson, Lonnie Walker, and Eric Gordon. For category leagues, if we're looking at the scoring categories, again, we go one sort of standard guy, one deeper guy. For scoring and points, we look at Duncan Robinson, and then deeper leagues, we go Lonnie Walker. And for threes, the same two guys that I'm looking at in the standard versus deep. Dunk Robinson and Lonnie Walker there. There'll be other options. Threes you can stream anywhere. Big men stats. If you're looking at rebounds, it's always got to be Andre Drummond. Even in 18 minutes, he can get double digits. Um, Nikola Jovic as a starter with Kevin Love out, maybe seven, eight rebounds available everywhere. Something there. For blocks, Derek Lively can get four or five in 22 minutes. And then I do have Bowl there. Now, I'm not super interested in Bowl as a general rule, but two blocks, 18 minutes, 15 minutes, 12 minutes. It's possible, and rightfully so, he's been dropped, so he's available in a lot of spots. If you're looking for some guard stats for assists, uh, TJ McConnell's available everywhere. He probably gets six or seven assists. And Kelly Linick, even though he's a big man, he does bring the guard stats, so assists for him, he's a very clear ad, obviously. For steals, we go to Alex Caruso, and then if you want to go deeper, Dennis Smith Jr. pops his head up there with now the absence of Cam Johnson to go with Thomas and Simmons. If we're streaming in for the percentages for field goal percentage, I am going to look towards Derek Lively the second, and in deeper leagues, amazingly, I am looking towards Blunty himself, James Wiseman. For free throw percentage, we go to Kelly Olenek, and then for deeper leagues, Malachi Branham is probably that guy. So, the stream of the day. The 10-team still remains Kelly Olenek, still not rostered anywhere near enough. Your 12-team is Royce O'Neal, and your 14-team is reluctantly Eric Gordon. I don't feel great about it, but in 27 minutes, he might score 16, 16 points with three threes. Might have two steals. That's possible. And then for 16-teamers, I'm going with Lonnie Walker. He's inconsistent. He's hit or miss. He's points and threes. But available everywhere and a big opportunity. Plus, there's also the three-game in four-night advantage that Lonnie has. And that will bring us to the end of a streaming show for Thursday's action in the NBA. Don't forget to come across here and give it the old thumb. Give it the bell. Give it the notification bell. That's the same thing as the first bell. Leave a comment down below. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.